Hello everyone and welcome back to the FIDE World Cup 2021. Uh, we have a very nice game between Sasha Martinovic, the uh, current Croatian champion, and Magnus Carlsen, of course, the world champion. And Magnus doesn't really need to play this tournament because mostly we want to play it to win the spot in the next candidate cycle. Uh, so two of the, the, the top ranked players in, the, uh, in this tournament will be getting direct access to the FIDE candidates tournament for, uh, for the next cycle. And if you don't know, uh, FIDE announced uh, the criteria for how to enter the uh, candidates tournament a few few months back I think so one spot will be the FIDE World Chess Championship match runner-up so uh, after Magnus faces the Yanni Pomnishi now in November uh, even if Magnus loses he will still get a, a, a direct placement into the candidates tournament for for the next cycle so one spot uh, will not be uh, the person with the highest rating but this time the uh, this spot goes to Temur Rajabov uh, because Rajabov um, uh, gave up his place in the candidates, you know, due to COVID and everything. And then Maxim took his place. Uh, but now we will have Rajabov in the next candidates tournament. Uh, for those of you who may may not have known this, so two spots uh, will be given to the uh, well to to the players who perform best at the FIDE World Cup, which is this tournament. Two spots will be FIDE Chess.com Grand Swiss tournament, also from 2021, and two spots the FIDE Grand Prix series, as they always do uh, in 2022. So without further ado, let's check out this game. Martinovic has the white piece, and it's quite quite a nice um, a nice positional game. So he goes for d4. Uh, we have knight to f6 by Magnus. C4, g6, knight to c3, and d5. Magnus goes for the Grunfeld defense here. We have c captures knight captures, and now uh, not going for the immediate e4. Bishop to d2 first. And now uh, this is not all. e4 is the most common play. The bishop to d2 is the second most common play, but also very very. Uh, very much playable and here black mostly goes bishop g7 or he just shifts the knight back to b6 but now magnus goes for c5 and it's a move that's only been played in a handful of games so he's trying to surprise uh, martinovic here uh we have rook to c1 you could also capture it uh, white will definitely capture this at some point and then black will play bishop g7 castles and black will have a very nice rapid development where white still has to play a few moves to get uh, his king to safety so instead uh, after this uh, c5 move we have rook to c1 uh, and now knight to c6 we have d captures on c5 and magnus continues with bishop to g7 and now there are a few games where knight to f3 was played but here we have e4 and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game so let's see how magnus deals with this he doesn't capture on c3 he plays knight to b4 now kind of puts pressure on the a2 pawn but not really you never want to give up this bishop just to grab this pawn uh, it's simply too, too too great of a piece so knight to f3 and here Magnus castles we have a3 now challenging this knight and the knight now goes to d3 delivering checks so white of course very happy to eliminate this knight bishop captures queen captures and now the queen prevents uh, the white king from castling so you have to uh, deal with this somehow either by playing queen c2 maybe queen e2 maybe bishop e3 maybe you defend this pawn offer a queen trade then maybe later on you can push b4 b5 uh you know uh, a lot of ways to, to deal with this so he plays queen to e2 and magnus very happily trades with queen captures king captures uh and now bishop to e6 with some ideas of grabbing more space bishop to c4 check would be would be very nice but also bishop to b3 might come in handy at some point so here knight to d5 blocking the light square bishop but also offering the b2 pawn uh for some uh for some activity so bishop captures on b2 and now sasha plays rook to c2 attacking the bishop thinking that magnus will just go back with the bishop since you can't really capture on a3 as rook to a1 would trap the bishop but this is exactly what magnus does he plays bishop captures on a3 and now comes rook to a1 and it seems like Carlson's bishop is trapped here but there is one move that he can play to get out of this mess so feel free to pause the video here and try to find this move for black the only good move for black while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being a true master of the position. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, F5. And F5 now shows that there's no way for white to actually claim the uh, the material advantage because black is threatening uh, pawn captures here. And then this knight will be under attack and also this knight will be under attack. So you don't really gain anything by uh, by uh, uh, capturing the bishop. But there there isn't really anything better. 
Uh, for example, if you try knight to c7, which seems like a good idea, attacks the rook here and the bishop on e6 that's undefended. After ev everything settles down, let's say f captures on e4, we're going to capture on e6. Of course, you're going to grab the piece, not the exchange. So knight captures on e6. Now e captures on f3 comes with check. And after g captures, rook f3 now goes after the knight. And now after this uh, bishop is captured, we're going to capture the knight with checking to f1. And now if you count everything, it's Magnus who's up a pawn, but also he has a much better pawn structure. Uh, white has a double f pawn, so black's position should be uh, with perfect play. I I, I I don't know if if it would be winning, but it would be very, very hard to play this, especially against someone like Magnus. So instead of this, after f5, we have rook captures an a3 right away. F captures on e4, now both of the knights are under attack, and now you have to give up one of them, so you might as well get something for it. So knight captures on e7, grabs back a pawn, knight captures, and now knight to d4, going after the bishop here, but just bishop to d7. At some point, uh, you want to play a6, and the b7 pawn will be... Uh, will be a liability, so we want to play this bishop to c6. So here, bishop, uh, rook to b2, attacking the b7 pawn, but Magnus just goes knight to c6, attacks the knight, and also if the knights uh, are, are traded off, then bishop captures here, Magnus gets exactly what he wanted. So instead, we have bishop to e3. Now comes knight captures on d4. With check, bishop captures and bishop to c6. So defending the b7 pawn, also defending the e4 pawn. And uh, Magnus now is up a pawn in this very, very interesting endgame. Uh, but it's bishops of opposite color. So if Sasha can get the rooks off the board, could be, could be you know, uh, it, it might be possible to prevent uh, Magnus from winning this. Uh, and Magnus will, of course, try to do everything in his power to prevent this. So here we have rook b to a2, now threatening the a7 pawn. Now a6. We have king to e3, but now rook a to d8. And now you could, uh, with black, you could maybe double up on the d file. You could also double up on the f file. Uh, all depends on what white plays. So here we have rook to d2, but now rook to d5. Again, both doubling on the f and on the d file are possible so all depends on what uh, white white plays we have king to e2 and now rook f to d8 putting pressure on the bishop here so bishop to e3 now offering a trade of everything but magnus just plays rook to d3 and it's a very sneaky idea because if sasha grabs this rook captures on d3 we're just gonna capture it with this pawn and we get the nice pass pawn here since you can't capture it bishop to b5 uh, wins the game for black uh, so instead, after rook d3, we have rook to a1, and here, king to f7. Magnus just slowly starts bringing his king into the game. We have g3, and now rook captures on d2. We have bishop captures, and now bishop to b5 with check. We have king to e1, now comes rook to d3. And you can see, even though it's bishops of opposite colors, uh, black's position is much, much better. Magnus has all of his pawns on light squares. Sasha has all of his pawns on dark squares, so the bishops cannot attack them. The problem is white has no way of activating his king. The rook covers the entire third rank, and there's no way of activating anything. The king can be activated. The bishop is useless since uh, abs absolutely everything Magnus has is on a light square. And the rook, of course, cannot enter the game via any open file since the only open file on the board is controlled by Magnus. And Magnus has... Has a pretty clear plan he's going to bring the king into the game and then win the c5 pawn uh the problem is or, or maybe not but he's gonna uh, well if he's not going to be able to win the c5 pawn then he will be able to do something else but th that's how chess works so for example uh, rook to b1 was played we have king to e6 magnus just starts bringing the king in rook to b4 we have bishop to c6 now defending this pawn uh rook to b2 bringing the rook back but now just king to e5 and it was in this position on move 34 that sasha resigned the game as there really isn't all that much to do here for white you could of course uh, put up more resistance but he decided to uh, turn in the towel and try uh, uh, better with the black pieces because two games are played um, uh, in the fide world cup so he will get a chance uh, uh, to retaliate with the black pieces now the problem is you can't really stop uh, black from uh, you know, just just moving forward. If you try some like rook a2, uh, we're gonna play king to d5. If you play rook back to c2, we're gonna play bishop to b5. Now we're gonna play bishop to c4, and we're gonna uh, cut off the rook's defense of the pawn and try to win it. And then, for example, let's say h3, we're gonna play bishop c4. We're try gonna try and win the pawn. If bishop to e3 now defends the pawn, now we start advancing this pawn because the bishop now moved. He, uh, we uh, he allowed us this square. The bishop covers a2, the rook covers a3, so we're just gonna push this pawn. 
on and it's going to be it's going to be a very swift victory for Blacks. Although you could make uh, why, uh, uh, Black's life uh, a bit hard uh, in the end, Magnus will prevail here. Sasha, of course, knows this. And after King to e5, he resigned the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, very, very, very nicely done. We'll see if Magnus will be able to win this. Uh, like I said, he doesn't, uh, even if he loses the World Chess Championship to Nepo, he doesn't really need to uh, to qualify via the... the uh, FIDE World Cup or anything since he has uh, an auto he since he will automatically be seated into the candidates tournament as the runner up but still uh, he decided to play and uh, maybe eliminate some of the more serious contenders from the uh, 2021 uh, 2022 FIDE candidates tournament uh, but yeah all in all uh, seems like he's having a good time here with the black pieces so let's see well, let's see what happens in the other games and of course uh, keep using hashtag hashtag suggestion to suggest more very nice games so yeah, once again, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Christopher Marchetti, Wojciech Kaminski, uh, Peter Grieve, uh, Francis um, uh, Air, uh, and Tom Derelau for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.